Welcome back. Let's look at a scenario that you find at many universities. A lecture hall packed with several dozens or even hundreds of students. Normally, we would assume that they are all on the same degree program, let's say on a BA program English, and that they all have to satisfy the same class requirements. This, however, is in many cases the exception rather than the rule. Instead, we find courses where the students are part of different degree programs. And unlike in my schematic representation here, they are normally scattered all over the room. They will eventually receive different numbers of credit points and to be awarded these different credits, they have to submit different tasks. In a traditional scenario, where content delivery takes place within the classroom, the content is the same for all these different groups, despite their different study goals and requirements. My version here might be a bit exaggerated. Five groups within one class, okay. That could be a bit too much. But two different groups within one class, that's not an exception at all. It is an enormous problem at our universities, especially after the implementation of the Bologna process. This problem can be defined as the target group problem. The teacher's role, for example, can be compared to a soccer coach who has to serve basketballers, volleyballers and the like in his training sessions too, just because it's a ball they have to move about. So, how can digitization help in all these cases? Well, with a digital teaching and learning model, we have no problem in target group differentiation. Since content delivery is now online, we can serve each target group with its specific content. Here is an example from our curriculum. In the course Phonetics and Phonology, teacher students and BA students are served with different digital classes. These classes share content, but they also differ to some extent. In the digital phase, that's not a problem at all. But what about the in-class phase? Well, in the resulting inverted classroom scenario, this phase is now primarily dedicated to practicing and deepening and we have all the time to take care of our students, even of different target groups. One option is that we serve all students in class with target group specific practicing material. This option has successfully been used at our department since 2012. Another option is to reduce in class time. In week one, we would only have the BA students in class. In week two, we would take care of the teacher students. In week three, of the BA students again, and so on. We have been referring to this concept of having two digital classes, but only one classroom, as the two-in-one concept. But remember, it only works with digital content content delivery outside the classroom and group differentiation within the classroom. After decades of target group mixing, we have thus succeeded to serve our students not only with the content they require, but we can also apply extra attention to specific difficulties they encounter during in-class time. And, by the way, this concept may also reduce lecture hall capacity problems. Instead of having one overcrowded in-class meeting every week where students would have to stand, sit in the windows or wouldn't even fit into that room, we now have lecture halls big enough for reduced crowds if we offer a two-week rhythm of in-class attendance. Our two-in-one concept has shown to be very successful and we have been applying it to several courses. However, and this should not be denied, apart from sophisticated digital content, it requires careful planning 
and concentration in class and well-designed target group specific practical material. I hope that I could illustrate how we can provide tailored content for different groups and how we could thus help solving an essential problem of traditional teaching and learning by means of digitization. Thanks for your attention.